Hi, in this video I will talk about a phenomenon named as flame rectification. Basically, flame has a properties that we can use to rectify AC voltage and it can act as a diode. So today I'm going to talk about this. First, I'm going to show you the experimental setup and after that I will do some experiments and finally I will explain our observation. Here I have a transformer. This is a step-down transformer from 230 volts down to 6 volts, 14 volts, 25 volts. But I needed a bit higher voltage, for example 60 volts, and I don't have such transformer at home. So I decided to take the 6 volts out of this transformer and feed it to another transformer in reverse direction. This one is 230 volts down to 24 volts. I take the 6 volts, feed to 24 volts terminals, and so at the other side, I will have 60 volts RMS, or approximately 85 volts peak. Basically, I will have something like this, a step down, a step up, and then I will have a sine wave with peak value of 85 volts. Now, if I measure the voltage across this source, obviously I measure a sine wave. If I add a diode after that, the voltage will be rectified and I get something like that. First, let me I show you this. I measure the voltage. Very straightforward. So that is the sine wave of the source. And if I take this diode and I connect it to my other probe, if I connect there, obviously we will see the rectification. But I want to replace this diode with a flame. So basically, I want to have this one. So the diode will be replaced with this setup. So one electrode is connected to the source and goes into the flame. Another electrode goes into the flame and comes out. So basically, I'm going to measure this. So this is our first experimental setup. I would change this arrangement. For example, one time I connect this electrode to the burner, or maybe I connect this electrode to the burner, or maybe instead of these thick electrodes, I will connect a very tiny wire uh, on top of the electrode so that it gets very hot. And then I will do several experiments. And finally, we will see the explanation. So let us start with this case. All right, so I connect the second electrode here. And notice that if I touch these electrodes, basically because of my body, already we will see the voltage at the output. So I should not touch the electrodes. So that's why I put this insulating tape on the electrodes. So in this case, if I bring both electrodes inside the flame, you notice that we do not observe much. We just observe some sort of very tiny signal, more or less a sine wave. All right, so now I'm going to explain this case. All right, so here is the experimental setup. We have the voltage source. We measure the voltage here. We have two electrodes, which we inserted inside the flame, and we measure the voltage at this point. Inside the flame, we have charge carriers consist of both positive and negative charges. The negative charges are mostly consist of electrons. Obviously, we also have some negative ions. And the positive charges are obviously positive ions. The main ionization inside flame happens near to the reaction zone in the lower section of the flame. The thickness of this layer is very small, is maybe half a millimeter or in that range. So most ionization happen here, and later, because of the movement of uh, gas, this charge carrier moved throughout the flame. But because of attachment and recombination of these charges, the density of the charge carrier throughout the flame will decrease as we move down the stream. The density of electron decreases with first order, and the density of positive ion decreases with the second order. So the density of electrons will be actually more when we are in this part of the flame. So if we have a current that flows through the flame, it will be mostly because of the electrons, because they have higher mobility and because the density here is more. But generally, the density of the charges inside the flame is very small. If we put these two rods inside the flame, the resistance between these two rods will be very huge, maybe in order of hundreds of mega ohms. In a previous video, I actually measured the conductivity of the flame, and it was around 5 microsiemens per meter. So it's very small. 
So the resistance here is huge, and I use the probe to measure the voltage, and I set the probe at 10x, which means the probe has a resistance of 10 mega ohm. So even though we have 10 mega ohm here, but because the resistance between these two rods is maybe 100 mega ohm or 200 mega ohm, so the voltage that we measure here will be only a very small fraction of the input voltage. And that's why we see a very tiny voltage at the output. So this explains our first observation. All right, so now I will perform the second experiment. In this case, it's very similar to the previous case, but I will touch the second electrode to the burner and bring the first electrode into the flame. What we notice is that when the voltage is positive, so positive half cycle, we will have some sort of rectification. And for negative half cycle, we have a little bit of voltage, but it's not that much. If I lift the electrode that is inside the flame upward, what you will notice is that it's still, for the positive half cycle, we have some voltage, but for negative half cycle, we have more or less a flat voltage. So no voltage, basically, in negative half cycle. If I do this experiment other way around, so I touch this electrode to the burner, and the other electrode goes inside the flame. So everything will be reversed. So in the negative half cycle, we have some voltage. In the positive half cycle, we have very small amount of voltage. If I lift the electrode that is inside the flame upward, we notice that still the negative half cycle produce some voltage, but for positive half cycle, we have more or less a flat voltage. Basically zero voltage. So based on this, we can actually achieve a rectification on positive cycle. And based on this, we can achieve rectification in negative cycle. So now I'm going to explain this scenario. All right, so this is the second experiment that we performed. In this case, the electrode that is connected to the voltage source is inside the flame. The other electrode is connected to the burner. And what we observed is that during positive polarity, we have rectification. During negative polarity, we have some sort of voltage, but the magnitude is much smaller than positive polarity. If you move the electrode that is inside the flame further up, what we observe is that still on positive polarity, we have rectification, but on negative polarity, we have almost no voltage. Basically, it's almost flat. Now I'm going to explain these cases. Let's say the electrode that is inside the flame is connected to positive voltage and the burner is connected to negative voltage. So with this case, basically we are investigating the positive half cycle. Under this condition, the electric field is downward and the electric field applies a force to the charges. For the electron, the force will be upward and for the positive ion, the force will be downward. So obviously the positive ions, they will come to the burner and go here. But for the electrons, because the force is upward, the electric field basically move them throughout the flame. Since the electrons, they have very high mobility, they basically move through the flame. And as we said, the decay of the electrons when they move through the flame is not that fast, it's first order. So still we will have electrons here. And eventually there will be a connection between the positive electrode and the burner, which is connected to the negative electrode. So the current can flow. So the current flows, basically this current passes through the impedance of the probe. And so we will have a kind of voltage here. So during the positive polarity, we will have this type of voltage. Still, because there is a large resistance here, the voltage will not be totally, uh, let's say, the input voltage, but it would be a fraction of it. During the negative cycle, basically, the electrode that is inside the flame has negative voltage, and the electrode that is connected to the burner has positive voltage. In this case, the electric field is upward, so the force to the electron will be downward. So they will be conducted to the burner and to the positive electrode. But positive charges, they feel a force upward. So they will start to move throughout the flame. But as we said, the positive ions will decay rather fast. So if they move throughout the flame, the density of these positive ions will decay. So under this condition, eventually, obviously, the positive ions will also reach to the negative electrode. We have some sort of connection but the amount of current that can be carried by this positive charge carrier is very tiny, and therefore we observe a very small voltage here. If we move this negative electrode further up into the flame, now the positive ions, they need to move more distance, and basically they will 
recombine and the density will decrease eventually. So what happens is that we have even lesser charge carrier in this region. So the current that can flow will be even smaller. And when the current is small, it means that we have a huge resistance here. So the voltage that would drop over um, the oscilloscope probe will be very tiny and it's almost flat. So we observe that for positive voltage, we have rectification. For negative voltage, under this condition, we have almost a flat. So we see clear rectification under this condition. If we reverse the connection of electrodes, basically you connect the source electrode to the burner and the other electrode inside the flame, then everything will be the other way around. So under this condition, during negative polarity, we have conduction, more conduction, and during positive polarity, we have less conduction. And if you move this electrode further up to the flame, again, during negative polarity, still we have conduction, but during positive polarity, we have very little current, and so the voltage that we measure will be very small. For the negative polarity, basically, because the electrons, they have very high mobility compared to ions, we will not notice it when we move from here to here. The, the difference will be very small between these two cases. But for positive ions, it can be clearly seen. All right, so this explains the second set of experiments that we did. All right, so for the next set of experiments, I'm going to connect a tiny wire to the electrode that is connected to the source. Okay, so this wire is made of copper and is very thin. So if I insert it into flame, this becomes red hot. Remember that first experiment that we did was that if I have two electrodes and I insert them into the flame, basically we only observe a very tiny voltage, a more or less a sine wave voltage. Now let's see what we observe in this case. So the thin wire going into the flame and gradually that becomes red hot. I should be aware that I don't touch the electrodes. So at this moment we have nothing. If I insert the other electrode into the flame, what you notice is that we get rectification on the negative half cycle. Rectification on the negative half cycle. If I lift this electrode up, so the one that has thin wire, and put the other electrode below it, you notice that we will have more or less a sine wave. So if this one comes down and the other electrode goes on top, we get rectification on the negative half cycle. And the other way around, it will be more or less a sine wave. Not very consistent because the flame moves around. Okay. Now what I do is that I'm going to connect a thin wire to the other electrode. Basically, this phenomena can be used to, to detect if there is a flame or not. So flame rectification is used for this purpose. Not many people use this phenomena to create a diode, but actually it can be used to detect fire or detect a flame. All right, under this condition, the second electrode, which has thin wire, goes into the flame. And when it is red hot, I will insert the other electrode on top of it. And let's see what we observe. Okay, so in this case, you notice that rectification happened on the positive half cycle. There is some sort of wind in my house. The flame is moving that side. So rectification happens on the positive side. The connection to these electrodes are very loose, so that's why the voltage will be disturbed. Yeah, and if we do opposite, then we will get more or less a sine wave. It's not that much rectification. All right, so now I'm going to explain this last set of experiments.
All right, so the final sets of experiment consist of one electrode that is connected to the source had a piece of wire, very thin wire. So because of the flame, this thin wire became red hot. And the other electrode was connected above these the red hot wire. Under this condition, we observe that we have some rectification on the negative polarity. And on positive polarity, we had basically very small voltage, almost flat. If we move the electrodes that has a tiny wire above, still this one is connected to the source, and the other electrode, we keep it below that, both of them inside the flame. In that case, we don't see much rectification. Basically, we see a kind of sine wave. The magnitude is more compared to the original case when we inserted only two rods inside the flame. If we connect the thin wires that becomes red hot to the second electrode, and if the first electrode that is connected to the source is on top of it, under this condition, basically we observe rectification on the positive polarity. And on negative polarity, we don't have any. So I'm going to explain one scenario, this case, and basically the other cases are very similar and you can study them yourself. All right, so for this scenario, the electrode that is connected to the source has a very thin wire because of the heat of the flame, this thin wire becomes red hot. Now, since this is red hot, it starts to emit electron because of a phenomenon named as thermionic emission. So now we have a lot of electrons that is produced because of this red hot wire. We have two scenarios to investigate. In one case, this electrode is connected to positive polarity and the other electrode is connected to negative polarity. This is basically the positive half cycle. Under this condition, the electric field is upward. So the force to the electron is downward and force to positive ion is upward. Because the force to the electron is downward, so they cannot move through the flame. We have certain number of positive ions inside the flame because, as I said in the first part, we have some ionization here, and because of movement of gas, these positive ions, they move through the flame. But the number of them, they are not many. So even though we have some force here to positive ions that can basically move from here to here, but the amount of conduction will be extremely small, and therefore the voltage that we see on the positive cycle will be very small. For the negative half cycle, basically this electrode will be connected to negative polarity and the other electrode will be connected to positive polarity. Under this condition, the electric field is downward and so the force to the electrons will be upward, the force to positive ions will be downward. And because the force to the electron is upward, so the electrons that are produced because of this red hot wire, they can move upward and a connection will be established from this electrode to that electrode. So the current can flow, and therefore, during negative polarity, we will see conduction of current, and eventually we measure a voltage. So that basically explains this case. For the other two cases are very similar, so you can analyze them yourself. All right, so that's all for this video. I hope that you learn something new, and we see each other next time. Bye.